deep sleep is key to regulating your metabolism. In the last half an hour before you go to bed, elevate your feet so that all the water is drained into the abdomen, into the bladder, and you will go to the bathroom, empty your bladder completely before going to bed, and hopefully you get a good night's sleep. Micronutrients are important, not just macros, although macros dictate how you look and how you feel to a large degree. Micronutrients dictate your health and how your cells communicate with one another, and it triggers what's called serotonin in the brain, that neurotransmitter that allows you to feel good and and then that neurotransmitter becomes melatonin after dark and allows you to get a good night's sleep. Don't have carbs in the evening. Your body does not need them. Being ravenous and craving things at night means you're not eating enough during the day and you're not satiated. Your blood sugar is dropping. Your body is waking you up to consume food to regulate your blood sugar levels so that you don't slip into a coma while you're asleep. It's not just because you're addicted to something. Welcome to the Diet Doctor Podcast, where we discuss the science of nutrition and high performance, offering practical tools for everyday life. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, what I'd like to do is follow up from the last episode with what a day of eating looks like, uh, a very, in, in summary. Um, in the beginning, in the very beginning of the day, you want to start by triggering your metabolism. You don't want to start with a coffee, at least for the first hour, because that's going to make you crash. And what you want to do is have something or consume something that will line your stomach so that when you do have the first coffee for the day, the acidity from the coffee does not destroy the lining of your stomach. Now, we do have the best coffee in the world, but our coffee is highly acidic. That's one of the reasons why it tastes so good. And as a consequence, it eats the lining of your stomach. Now, does that mean you should avoid drinking coffee altogether? No, because two thirds of Australians get their antioxidant intake from, from coffee, not from fruit. So before you have your coffee, is what I do before I leave the house, is I have about half a glass of water, not much. Um, sometimes that water is replaced with a freshly squeezed green juice. I'll often add greens powder on top of that just for the added micronutrient benefits. Micronutrients are important, not just macros, because although macros dictate how you look and how you feel to a large degree, micronutrients dictate your health and how your cells communicate with one another and um, that feeling of well-being. It triggers what's called serotonin in the brain, that neurotransmitter that allows you to feel good and then that neurotransmitter becomes melatonin after dark and allows you to get a good night's sleep. Often what I'll add to that are a few herbs that I feel are amazing for helping not just your health, but for your vitality during the day and that sense of well-being and getting rid of inflammation. The things that I like to add are ashwagandha, lion's mane. I tend to add fenugreek as well. Um, tonka Ali as well, tend to add those things to help with hormone regulation and hormone balance as well. One of the things I like to add, and which isn't common, um, it's more common to be used as an intra-workout supplement, is glutamine. Glutamine, although it's advertised, especially in, when it, on, uh, in the early stages of when it came onto the, onto the market, it was advertised as increases growth hormone by 400% and all the rest of it. Now, it, it, it does do that. However, because gut health wasn't cool to talk about, it wasn't really, you know, smack bang on the label. Glutamine is really, really good for gut health. I will have a serving of glutamine with my greens juice, apple cider vinegar, et cetera, and all the other herbs in the morning. I'll have another serving intra-workout, and a serving is anywhere from five to 10 grams, and then another serving post-workout. It's got no taste, it doesn't upset your stomach. If anything, it does help with gut health. Now, if you find that difficult to, 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 to drink because of the apple cider and all the other herbs, it's good to chase it down with some manuka or Yemeni sudar honey, which are very, very good for you. Interesting fact, the last study on honey that was done in the supermarket showed that there was no honey in the honey. So be cautious where you buy your honey from. After that, um, there'll be a training session and then breakfast. Now, before breakfast, sometimes, not all the time, I will have a probiotic, a, a practitioner grade probiotic, um, and I'll make sure that at breakfast there's all macros, proteins, carbs, and fats because your body needs all of those when you come from a fast, especially post-workout, and you can benefit from all three and you can consume all three without any weight gain safely when it's early in the day. So fats will be things like avocado, smoked salmon, 
uh, preferably wild or line caught smoked salmon because it tends to be higher in mercury. Fish that eat other fish, large fish like salmon and tuna, are generally higher in mercury than your than their uh, than the barramundi, which is a you know it's a as, which is known as a tree hugger of a fish because it doesn't eat other fish; it eats plantation. Now, I will have my ho- eggs whole. The yolk is not there by accident; it's there to 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 provide you with good fats and choline and an abundance of micronutrients that the body needs. And it also helps with the bioavailability of the egg white. In addition to that, there'll be some vegetables, maybe some some spinach and tomato and cucumber and things like that. Interesting enough, tomato is actually easier to digest when it's a little bit cooked. Because of the acidity, a lot of people get reflux from tomato. Try a tomato that's slightly cooked and you can absorb more of what's uh, uh, in the tomato, in particular the antioxidant lycopene. Anything red contains lycopene, and lycopene helps protect men from prostate cancer. That's a fact. And having the avocado increases, or fats, increases the bioavailability of lycopene by over 400%. Now, the carbohydrates of choice, usually some sort of sourdough bread, because if you haven't listened to the episode with Dr. Pauline Aldrotsky, um, I urge you to do that. We mentioned the effects of sourdough and how how wonderful it is for your gut health. Um, soy linseed, sourdough, quinoa, rye, all of these are good for you. Or oatmeal, preferably soaked overnight. Now, if you don't soak your oats overnight, you're going to bloat. But that doesn't mean you diagnose yourself as gluten intolerant because most of us bloat from oats. There's an enzyme in there that almost no one can digest. So it's best to soak them overnight to activate the, the, enzy- the, the nutrients that are in there to make it easier and more bioavailable to digest. Any supplements you have to take, take them halfway through breakfast or lunch when your digestion is at its peak and it's easier to digest and metabolize and absorb what those supplements have to offer. The next couple of meals will contain a protein, a carb, and a fat. Sorry, a protein, yeah, protein, a carb, and a fat. However, the protein of choice during the day for myself is white protein, white meat. So chicken breast, turkey breast, white fish. Because I'm having carbohydrates, I don't want meat that is naturally fatty. And colored fish and red meat naturally contain more fat. So I don't want carbohydrates with those meals because if carbs are there and I spike the insulin levels at the same time that I've got fat in the meal, that fat may be stored as fat that is around the organs, visceral fat, or fat that's on on the body, subcutaneous fat. The reason for that is the insulin spike is a window of opportunity for nutrients to be absorbed. You only want to do that after training. So white meats with carbohydrates, colored meats with fibrous, cruciferous carbs like salads and vegetables. That's generally the rule of uh, uh, the rule uh, rule of thumb when it comes to combining the meals during the day. And low glycemic carbohydrates such as quinoa, uh, brown rice. Um, and those sort of things. Because although brown rice does have more carbohydrates than white rice, it is higher in fiber and one gram of fiber negates one gram of sugar or carbs. So if something has five grams of fiber and five grams of carbs, it's technically a net total of zero. In between meals, I'll often have some fruits such as pineapple, papaya, kiwi, but all fruits are okay. Just be strategic with how you combine your fruits. I've got several posts on my Instagram page where I talk about fruit combinations because not all fruits go together. I've had friends have a fruit salad and then diagnose themselves as fructose intolerant. Melons are eaten alone because they're, you know, predominantly water and they don't digest well with anything. Then you've got acidic fruits like uh, citrus fruits, uh, grapefruit, oranges and things like that. Then you've got subacidic fruits like apples and and grapes and, and berries. You can eat subacidic with acidic but you can't eat those with other fruits. So combine your fruits strategically. Stone fruits are more of a luxury. I have them during the day if I have them, and it's always before food because fruit before food doesn't cause gaseous reactions in the stomach. You want to see a gaseous reaction. Also on my page, I've got a little experiment where I combine vinegar, which replicates the environment of the stomach with all the acidity in digesting food, with a little bit of bicarb or baking soda. I try this experiment with your kids at home. Put a little bit of white vinegar in a cup and put a teaspoon of baking soda or a bicarb soda afterwards. The bicarb soda is the alkaline environment of the fruit because all fruits become alkaline, even lemons when you digest them, when you consume them. 
So the acidity in the stomach is the vinegar, the baking soda is the fruit. Put the two together and you'll show them a nice gaseous reaction that will teach them very easily a practical uh, method of teaching them why you should be eating fruit first. The fruits of choice that I tend to go for more than often and recommend is things like pineapple and papaya and kiwi with the skin. Kiwi with the skin, an abundance of vitamin C, more so than oranges, and vitamin C increases your carnitine production and rectifies the metabolism from the root cause, from a grassroots level. Instead of um, helping your metabolism uh, from a superficial level, vitamin C increases the body's saturation of carnitine and helps your metabolism that way. Pineapple and papaya are rich in bromelain. Bromelain is a protease enzyme that helps you break down the protein, takes a bit of the stress off the organs uh, in the digestion of protein, which is tough, and increases how much protein you absorb. It's a lot of information, but hang in there. I hope you're taking notes. Um, afterwards, in the latter half of the day, I will tend to have a protein that is fattier and colored. So red meat, grass-fed steak or pasture, grown, steak, beef, lamb, or salmon or tuna. Now, the reason for that is those types of meats keep you nice and satiated in the evening, and you're less likely to wake up because of a blood sugar dip and you know being ravenous and craving things at night. If you're doing that, it means you're not eating enough during the day and you're not satiated, your blood sugar's dropping, your body is waking you up to consume food to regulate your blood sugar levels so that you don't slip into a coma while you're asleep. It's not just because you're addicted to something. Combine those with some fibrous or cruciferous carbohydrates, vegetables, salads, and things like that. Don't have carbs in the evening. Your body does not need them. And right at the very end of the night, I tend to finish the evening with a cup of peppermint tea, a little bit of dark chocolate, and some shilajit. Now the reason shilajit, I talk about it abundantly in on my on my socials for its uh, anti-inflammatory effects, hormone uh, regulating effects, and all the rest of it. But let me highlight peppermint tea and dark chocolate for digestion. You have those combinations before you go to bed, and the food hopefully will be completely digested before you lay down. So your likelihood of storing fat is um, is very slim. There's an interesting, unique fact about peppermint tea and dark chocolate. Dark chocolate has trace amounts of caffeine but enough to make the intestines hyper-contract and help you digest that food a little bit more rapidly so that there's nothing left in the stomach when you lay down and you go to bed. One tip, if you wake up at night and you tend to go to the bathroom too frequently, that's because when you lay down, all the water from your legs, your lower body, tends to make its way to the stomach, which makes you want to go to the bathroom. So in the last half an hour before you go to bed, elevate your feet, so that all the water is drained into the abdomen, into the bladder, and you will go to the bathroom, empty your bladder completely before going to bed, and hopefully you get a good night's sleep. I urge you to have a little bit of magnesium, glycinate or bisglycinate, zinc of the same nature, um, and even some GABA. These things really help you get nice, deep sleep. And it's very important, like I said in the previous episode and this one, that deep sleep is key to regulating your metabolism. If you find that this information was too much, overwhelming, a lot of information in a very short period of time, I urge you to listen to it again, two times, three times if you have to, take notes and implement them into your day-to-day -day routine. And I can't wait to hear your feedback. Stay tuned and I'll see you again next time.